no sense to me. And so when you think of the ultimatums that have come out by several CEOs lately about return to office and basically you either like it or you don't like it and we, we need you to do this right now, it's the exact wrong way to motivate people, right? Yeah, and actually I wrote a piece in, in, in Inc. recently with uh, Sheila Subramanian at, at Slack and uh, Salesforce around this topic. And what we were writing about was this idea that I think rather than obsess on the policy, let's focus on the why and make a really good argument. So I know some uh, Wall Street bosses have asked for pretty much, let's go back to where we came from before the pandemic. There's no right answer on this, but I think the test for a leader is not just to go back to a certain model because you're comfortable with that model. What is the rationale? Why is it so important? What are you going to do with these days in the office that is going to be fundamentally different? Because what I think if we just, if we have the policy, we go back to the office and we're all on Zoom screens or team screens and trying to shout over each other and different things, that's not going to be, most people are not going to believe that argument. So we've really got to think about the nature of the work itself and how are we trying to really, what's the why? Why do we believe it's so important? I think there is a strong reason to meet together regularly, whatever the frequency is. But how can we articulate that? How can we use this also to promote the sense of autonomy that you talked about? There, there is more flexibility. How can we give our workers more leadership and more freedom to drive things they, they want to? It's a great opportunity to take that on. And the last thing I think is that we tend to underplay the role of managers, especially the middle of organizations, in creating day-to-day culture. And as a result, that's why I think a lot of the the sort of this clash over the rest of the office has happened. We don't see their value as much as we should. If we could really empower and train our managers, and develop them to be great nurturers, to really bring the best out of their employees, there's a much more obvious reason to be in the office, which is to spend time, time with them, not just formal time, but informal nurturing time as well. So an awful lot of managers have never really been trained properly how to nurture. So really what has to happen to make that feasible and possible. So I'm on a mission to do this now with a number of organizations. And I think what I, what, when I talked about the book, this concept of nurturing was trying to market it differently from traditional styles of management. So you've got the kind of management by instruction, the kind of top-down command and control mindset that most organizations, let's be honest, have run on for the last 50 to 100 years. That we know doesn't work, especially with knowledge work and workers who feel they want to be part of the process. They want to drive things along with their organizations that's out i trained as a coach i'm a big fan of coaching but what i found with coaching was that the ultimate at least the the pure forms of coaching there's an assumption the client has all the answers and let's say you are a manager trying to coach a, a younger employee they may not have just seen enough in the world in terms of patterns connections mental models there's a lot that you've got to do to actually help them see the world differently as well so what we need is to go beyond coaching the final model that's out there, which is our mentoring, which is this is what I did when I was successful, that kind of copy-paste model doesn't generally work that well because everyone's situation is unique. And even if it, there is similar, there's a natural defensiveness in feeling like, okay, this person's coming in to tell me you know, just to share what they did and not listen to my reality. So I talked about in the book uh, about this kind of almost fourth way called nurturing, which is in between the, these sort of ways of leading. And it's really about helping the person get to a place they wouldn't have got to otherwise. 